when we are trying to figure out the amount of energy that is released by a uh, nuclear reaction, we can also look at it from the binding energy perspective. Now, I personally prefer this, uh, this way a little bit better, and I have reasons for that. So let's look and understand what happens. Now, first of all, you have the reactant over here, which is uranium. In order to form lanthanum and bromine, you have to break the uranium down into a pool of constituent nucleons, right? So, of course, in this case, there would be 92 protons inside there and 235 minus 92 neutrons inside this pool over here. So, um, in order for this to happen, right, of course, what we need is we need the binding energy of the uranium. Or let's just call this binding energy of the reactants. You need to provide that to break the uranium up first. Now, what's going to happen, of course, is then these nucleons will then be able to form the products. And when you form these products, guess what? You release the binding energy of lanthanum and bromine. And so that will be the BE of the products. The neutrons in this case are mere spectators. They don't really take part in this binding energy process, right? Because they're not bounded to anything. And so, of course, since this is released and since this is absorbed, how do you figure out the net energy released? Well, that is quite simple. Right? And so the energy released in this case will be the summation of the binding energies of the products minus the summation of the binding energy of the reactants. Right? And of course, same thing as before, this energy here is typically realized in the form of the kinetic energy of products and gamma rays. And so now we bring ourselves back to this wonderful curve that we introduced earlier. Right? And so now we can understand to a, well, a, a better degree for why people over here would want to do fusion, right? It's not just a stability excuse. And why the people over here would want to do fission, right? Because as you can see, if I do fusion on the left side of iron, then my reactants would be somewhere there and my products would be somewhere there. And indeed, you want the binding energy per nucleon of the products to always be higher than the binding energy per nucleon of the reactants. Similarly, on the other side, if I do fission, my reactants will be here and my products will be here. And again, you get this same wonderful scenario where the BE of the products is higher than the BE of the reactants. In which case, if you always do this and that, you will always release, but well, maybe not always, but more often than not, you will release energy in your nuclear reaction.